Well, Welcome smudged, to Binary too. Jazz. Well, Gary cleans his camera for 40 minutes or so. <laughs> uh, it's been <laughs> like a while. The, entire episode. <laughs> the whole thing. Just... Yeah. Cleanse it with fire. Um, oh, my background isn't blurred. How's everybody doing? You know. You know. <laughs> yeah. if you know you know yeah it's uh it's it's been it's been a thing it's the 2023 is a is is it's a thing it's a lot mm. um gosh we had some guests um which was fun because right. there were it was it was good but it was it's like that pace when you have guests and you're like oh this is different than my normal <laughs> like life pace because <laughs> you're like doing things and eating out more and like mm -hmm. I don't know just all the things so that was lovely but it was also really lovely to just go back to the normal pace that I'm mm -hmm. accustomed great to see you great to see you leave yeah <laughs> um and then we have more guests in another week or so so wow, wow. you're just regular socialites I mean, just yeah you know like Robin's brother and then my brother and and company <laughs> so it's just yeah, yeah my parents be... are my parents are flying in tomorrow so i'll have a little bit of that uh as well yeah over the weekend do you uh, i find my parents calling me more and more for tech support related items more like they used to and it was fine because it kind of made sense but now they're calling me for things that i'm like i don't know why the oven isn't like <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like other things where you're like, that's not in my wheelhouse at all. My my parents never contact me for basically anything ever as a as a general baseline rule. <laughs> um even when stuff happens like, you know, my stepmom like broke her leg or something, and I didn't hear about it until a week later when they when my dad was telling me about the trip that they took uh to like Detroit I guess uh and went to the rock and roll uh hall of fame or museum or whatever and uh oh yeah um you know Randy's is is in a wheelchair and all these pictures because she broke her leg wait what <laughs> um <laughs> That feels like classic parents as well, where they're like, oh, also, by the way, this yeah. major thing happened. <laughs> um, there was a point in time, that, I mean, there's there's like one point, like once I can remember in, in recent memory where my dad asked me uh, a, an actual computer related question. But but by and large, and I didn't have the answer. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> talk talk to the you know, HP or whatever. Um, but by and large, my parents don't now. Aaron's parents, particularly her dad, always did. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't, it was, it was not done in a way that was like disrespectful. It was like, it was like, hey, he like tried to figure stuff out on his own. And it was like, hey, um, you know, having this problem, you know, I've tried this and this and this. Can you come over and look at it? Or do you know how to do X? And it would be, you know, usually like, you know, oh yeah, this is how you do that thing. And it's like, great, thanks. And that's it. Um, or maybe it'd be like, next time you come over, can you show me how to do this thing? Um, yeah, an exchange of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, since since he's passed, I don't get those requests as much, but there are definitely occasions where I will get them via Aaron for like, hey, my mom's having this problem on the computer that she doesn't know how to figure out. Can you take a look at it? Um, but uh, so, I've, I mean, I've always kind of been that thing and definitely for like the rest of her mom's family, like... Mm -hmm. I've gotten phone calls from Aaron's aunt, um, like random calls about like, hey, I, I can't do this, this thing. And like, I don't like her. her she also perhaps has has dementia as well. And so like I, half half of the problem is like user error and the other half is like not remembering where you put your laptops, you know, like, yeah. or like, I don't know how to log into email because like, you know, the password on the piece of paper that I wrote down is lost sort of thing. Like, yeah. so like, and, and usually it's like super random. Uh, um, but oftentimes they'll just... 
oftentimes they'll just save those things up for like when we have a big get together and then it'll just be like a, a barrage of that's of, yeah that's and I've been trying to get my mom to avoid doing that because I'm just like because it's a lot I'm like because when we show up on vacation and you literally have written out a list yeah yeah and this thing of, and this thing and this thing yep this I'm just like been so working if we can for do months. it <laughs> if we can do any of it virtually that would be great because oh Um, you were talking about like the parent thing, and that was my dad's message when he fell off the roof. Uh, I, I shouldn't say fell off; like he fell through the screen enclosure. What? And like he's like, "Hey, uh, I took a little spill. Um, I feel <laughs> a okay." Spill. Yeah, he's like, "I was I was cleaning the gutters. She just asked, took a little spill. Mom's taking me to the ER, but I feel fine." Then like an hour later, my mom's like, "Yeah, <laughs> he's got broken like back and ribs and uh, like partially collapsed lung." And I'm like, "Oh." All right. Well, that's a little different than a little. I mean, he was like, and, you know, and that's also a little different than feeling fine. Yeah, I would argue. My mom yeah. did the same thing though. She was just like, "Oh, I took a little spill, so don't call because I don't want to be on camera." And I was like, "What?" <laughs> I was just like, "This well, is not working the way you think." Because my immediate reaction is to call. <laughs> yeah, now. I was like, "I'm calling immediately." <laughs> Sorry. Oh god. Yeah. And she was like, and I was like, oh, I was like, do you need stitches? And she was just like, no. And I was like, okay, that's, well, that's, I was like in my head being like, that's a, that's a good sign that it probably wasn't as bad as I'm making it out to be in my head. And then later I found out she doesn't need stitches because she never went, <laughs> she never went to see anybody oh, who no. would tell her she needs stitches. Technically correct is the best kind of yeah. correct if we learn yeah. anything from Futurama. I know. I just, I. It's funny because I'm just like, I'm sure I'll be the same way when I'm older yeah. to some extent, but it's frustrating as, as <laughs> in this stage, I'm just like, I also just... have the experience where my dad's like, oh yeah, when your dad fell, or I'm sorry, when your mom fell in March and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she took, a, she, yeah. she was fine. She didn't even have to go to the, the ER and I'm like, okay, like that, those have been mentioned. On more than one occasion, you know, I'm like, so because it's like they don't want to worry you, and it's just mm -hmm. like, but at the same time, I'm like, these are like, but meanwhile, I know everything about like my mom's distant friend who I barely know, like she's updating me on her, <laughs> but I'm like, these are the important things that should come Isn't up. That the truth. Yeah, yeah, well, especially since we've sort of transitioned to to caregiver roles for uh Aaron's mom, like um like it's like we're seeing like okay, so we know kind of most of the time what's going on with her because like Aaron is there mm -hmm. four days a week. Um my parents are not in this in that situation yet, but at some point they might be. Yeah. And we're you know a thousand miles away and they don't tell me things so what is that going to look like when we have no way of knowing actually what's going on you know like yeah. and and were we not going over uh regularly over you know up the block uh to to her house um how much would be know about what was going on right like would we walk in one day and there she is lying dead and haven't been touched for you know 24 hours or something like mm -hmm. that's the oh. same thing like my parents aren't at that stage yet but they're far enough away from both me and my brother that mm -hmm. i'm like and yeah, I mean, like you, you kind of need to know what and i can on. also sense that like my mom complained used to complain about my granny like not telling her the truth about what happened mm -hmm. at doctor's appointments. And now I'm like, I'm feeling the same way. And I'm trying to like remind her of, of that, like weird, worried, helplessness feeling and being like, mom, you don't like, mm -hmm. gotta, gotta keep me in this loop. Like gotta keep me. <laughs> that, that was my grandfather. He died in February of 2020. Yeah. Cause I was like flying back from Cleveland from funeral, like week before COVID hit the U S shores um but he he uh he was active i mean he was like at stuff every day and it was uh he wasn't at the, the men's group on a saturday morning at his church mm. and uh so the the best people could surmise was that he was last seen on thursday and mm -hmm. somewhere in there you know died and... yeah 
On uh, a plus side of helping older people with technology, we went and saw Rob- Robin's grandpa, who's turning 100 in a few weeks, mm. oh, wow. and increased the font size on his iPad and phone, yeah. and happy as a clam. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best, like, forget the bottle of wine we brought, forget anything else. That was the gift, <laughs> was that he can, like, see things better now. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we did that for um, for Aaron's mom a couple of years ago when we were setting up her her new phone. I think it was probably when we were when we first got her phone and we were and putting them on our cell phone plan. Um, and like it was like it had that that question like, what do you want the font size to be? And I was like, do this, 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 and and yeah, and but I don't know. At this point, technology is kind of just generally too much um of any of any variety um so i think she can read things but she doesn't necessarily know the context she has she has this thing where you know like you'll get the text message but your phone isn't is locked right so you get the message or like a preview of the message on your lock screen um and she'll see that and she'll think that's like the whole message but not necessarily like understand that um like there was context above or below or like that there's more to the message or or whatever um and that has been cause for for confusion um uh more than more than once and um and then like getting into it just generally like just technology is just hard now yeah well like my mom called me yesterday about something cuz she got a new computer cuz her old her laptop was from <laughs> 2010 Mm. and she was just like I was thinking I would just sign on and it would be all the same and everything's different and I was like I know I was like I'm sorry mom but and then I was trying to help her with something with iCloud and she was Mm -hmm. doing exactly what she needed to do but for Mm -hmm. whatever reason it wasn't working so and it's it's that like lack of confidence that she doesn't know she thinks she's doing the right thing but then when it doesn't work she's like maybe this maybe i'm really off base here and i'm like no no this is a bug this is not you this is yeah <laughs> like <sighs> good times and they never call my brother because he never picks up <laughs> Well, there you go. There's there's the secret right there. So I just need to become more busy. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, so I've been playing with this new AI bot. Oh Actually, God, I've been yes. playing with a couple of AI Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's fascinating. So the new one that I found... I found it indirectly because somebody um, I work with who's also interested in AI stuff found these like um, like in the documentation page for this particular AI, which is Claude.ai. Um, it has like special hacks or tips for like writing good prompts and also like for getting better responses from it by like giving specific pieces of information or telling it to do specific things for different contexts. Um, and I think it was just, he was just sort of like giving that as like a general information, like, cause we were talking about open AI, but then I, I sort of went backwards and like, well, what is this Claude.ai thing? Uh, and sort of playing with it. Um, and it's very similar to chat GPT. Um, but it is a lot better at like writing sort of creative prose. Um, it's not, it's not good at like knowing outside context, um, like chat GPT knows, enough about the outside world that I was able to get it to like build a playlist for me with actual songs that actually existed in the real world and fit a particular theme and tone that I was asking it for mm-hmm. more or less. Um, but I try to do the same thing with Claude and it's like, I don't know anything about music that, that yeah. is, you know, uh, I exist the, over here. Yeah. yeah. Um, is Claude an acronym or something, or is it just like I a think name? Just, I think it's just a name. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was able to get it to write like legit, like fictional stuff that sounds a lot more human and realistic uh, and even come up with like, um, like 
hey, describe this like romantic scenario between these two fictional characters that you just made up like five minutes ago mm-hmm. and like what this would look like. And it like trying to ask an AI bot about like how to describe a romantic scenario is generally pretty stilted. Mm-hmm. And it did a decent job of like carrying nuance in a way that sounded uh, like stuff that I would read in like in romantic fiction like Mm -hmm. like it was it was you know it wasn't like super amazing but it was good enough that like that it sounded pretty you know like it it wasn't like you know it wasn't like write a novel it was like write describe a a scene or something yeah Yeah. and it was definitely like it was definitely hitting the right notes Mm -hmm. um which i thought was pretty impressive for a for a bot so um, and it's supposed to be like it's modeled to like try to emulate human speech and writing better than other things, I guess. Um, but some of the hacks are like um, telling it to like if you tell it to think out loud, basically, and like keep notes for itself, then it can it'll write out its notes and then refer to the notes in the response. You know, so like you say, like here, like I want you to like describe X and like. And you can think uh, think step by step and like um, put your notes in like a block of text that's like wrapped in thinking tags and then mm-hmm. respond below. And so you ask it to do that and it's like oh, thinking blah, 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 blah. And like you're working through all the things that it needs to do, like like somebody thinking out loud. Yeah. And then it will. No, I take... mean, it sounds like how I would yeah. write an essay or something yeah. Like, yeah. to like get some notes down and then expand it. Yeah. I, I need an AI pep talk every day. That's what I need. I, that's I mean, a that's a thing that there's, can be arranged <laughs> there's like pep talk generators as well yeah, yeah. without it well it's not without ai i'm sure there's something beyond this behind the scenes but meanwhile i spent like half the day arguing with uh chat gpt about like a bash script that i was trying to get it to write like no this doesn't work <laughs> and no this doesn't work okay try this other thing because you're just getting it wrong <laughs> I was trying to get it to, and and to be fair, that the Bash script like got to be pretty complex, and I think that it was getting a lot, but like it was, it was ninety nine point nine 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 percent generated by the bot itself, mm-hmm. and I was just like running its code and testing it. Um, so like it, the complexity was stuff that it added in itself at like you know for specific prompts, and then it was like okay, yeah, but yeah but you you messed up this thing over here <laughs> and it wasn't getting the stuff that it was mess, messing up and it kept like saying well i'll fix oh yeah I'll, i understand and i'll fix that problem and it's like no you actually didn't fix the problem you <laughs> fixed some other thing that's completely it's... unrelated <laughs> well that should tell you everything you need to know about bash <laughs> i mean there's a lot of things i've learned about bash in the last year gary <laughs> <laughs> including that there's many different like languages that are similar to bash uh Mm -hmm. that aren't bash that behaved slightly differently um and that like depending on like the modes that you set uh it might do completely different things and yeah (laughs) and like my bash on my computer is not necessarily the same thing as your bash or a bash that's Mm -hmm. like being run (laughs) by github actions even if it is still bash and yes yeah (laughs) yeah wait gary why do you need a pep talk every day just because (laughs) Uh, I, I maybe I just maybe I just feel like I need that right now because I'm tired. It's been a very <laughs> long week. You can very do long. it, woo! <laughs> and actually, uh, like I'm not really doing much work today. It's more like I'm just like present in case somebody has a question, and I, and my answer is like, can we address that on Monday? Like literally, <laughs> let's put a pin in that. <laughs> well, we've got some other things in flight, so let's let's circle back. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I did one group meeting and. It was like a big hoorah because it was some people I haven't talked to since we entered beta. And I was just like, you know, I hope you all are proud of yourselves. Well, I didn't say it like that. I mean, I said it like I was actually proud of them. I was like, giving it a lecture. I, <laughs> I hope, hope you're, you're proud all of proud of yourselves. Because... <laughs> okay. So I just asked Claude to give my friend Gary a pep talk. <laughs> okay. Because you said you wanted an AI to give you a pep talk. And this is what Claude says to, to tell you. Oh, no. Gary. I know things have been tough lately, but you've got mm. this. 
You are stronger than any obstacle in your path. Every setback is not is just an opportunity to grow. Dig deep and find that inner strength that I know you have. You are talented, smart, and capable of achieving anything wrong. you set your mind to. I don't this, this is just a moment in time. Soon this will all be behind you. Keep your chin up and keep moving forward one step yeah. at a time. I believe in you. You've accomplished so much rest. already. I'll be good. I don't need this. <laughs> You've accomplished so much already, and then know the best is yet to come. Stay positive and focus on the future. Your hard work will pay off if you just keep going. You've got amazing things ahead of you. I just know it. Keep your head held high. You've got this, Gary. Don't give up. Yeah, that I just think the problem exhausting. with that is that it's like too, it's too much all it at once. It was a lot. That was a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm like I'm more exhausted after that pep talk. Like maybe I'll just get a cup of coffee. <laughs> that's, that's probably maybe all I need is a little caffeine. I mean, I wasn't more specific than uh, than give my friend Gary a pep talk. I was. <laughs> I know, but but now that now that I've now that I've had an AI. Now that you've talk, had the pep talk, now you need a. Now I you don't need, need to ask downer. for it again. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> yeah. I need a. Uh, yeah, maybe you should use the word brief, because goodness, by like the third stanza, I was I was done. <laughs> <laughs> third stanza. <laughs> This, um, the last two weeks have been, uh, just it's like one of those things where like, you know, passion about the project is cool. And then as a result, like, I'm like, well, I can do just a little more. And mm. on Wednesday, I, I was, the human body is magnificent. Like it's, it, it's been a fascinating, like, to like spend some time in the morning, like reflect and think on myself. But like, uh, today was the first day I slept on my alarm clock in like more than two weeks. Cause like work has been make, waking me up and you know i'm like oh i'll go throw some notes down and then go eat breakfast and then go back to work you know and not like you know have some boundaries although way looser than usual and uh and i was kind of like i knew i was it was not a good idea not yeah i knew i sort of felt like i wanted to do that to get this thing out the door but uh, but i'm exhausted like wednesday i woke up at 4 30 and um we finally were done I, like I pushed the button at 6.30 that took the IP restrictions off and opened it to the world. So it was like a, what was that? Like a 14 hour day on <laughs> Wednesday. I'm like, yeah, I, I hit my 40 hours though on Wednesday. So that was nice. <laughs> it's like, that's so dumb. Uh, you need a weekend. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Sounds it's like also make like- Make up a long weekend today. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people did take today off. And I, um, I didn't just cause I was like, like it's hit social media and stuff. And so I'm just kind of hanging around in case something mm. pops up. Mm. I mean, I'm not actually working today. I'm just, I'm telling people to put up internet. <laughs> um, yeah. But also I'm like, like in the midst of the exhaustion, I'm just like exhilarated, like having shipped that thing. Like it's it's exciting mm -hmm. yeah. i don't know i don't know what happens like next i mean i know i keep working on it but i don't know like next you know yeah it's like this big thing that was like the goal we got there and now it's like oh what 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 now mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. so at first that happens, that's what you got hired for right is to build this new site yeah 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 i mean there's and, and it's not like it's not like there's like a, any change in like contract or anything because there's both recognition that the web is like not done so right we, we have a huge backlog of bugs and features um bugs to remove not to add um <laughs> and uh and there's like like a, um, a massive pile of stuff that they want to consolidate so there's still thousands of subdomains you bump into that are they want to pull in so there's plenty of work to do it's just uh you know that's a pro like, that's a future you issue yeah that's a next week problem. i know i'm not well, i'm not really worried about it what i'm worried about is um actually what i'm super worried about is um uh because we because we basically let ourselves get to this like frenzied pace in the last six months what i'm worried about is like does the team remember how to work like slowly and like methodically normally, and yeah yeah like like real like we should and to ship like really good safe stuff and uh, uh so that's like that's like the the thing that I'm I'm like most focused on is like let's let's bring some calmness and back into this whole process and um, well and yeah, part of well, that I will think... be like the project managers 
like or whoever sets the goalposts for things yeah. right well technically the goalposts are set by the engineering team yeah the project um, manager just makes it happen well i will say that the people that um somewhat i mean there's also it's the reality of being like in a federal organization is that sometimes somebody with a really long title up top sees this and goes, yeah, but I want this to happen. And yeah. you just sort of have to make it happen. Yeah. And, um, but the people that on the fed side that matter that I work with most directly, like I've had pretty frank conversations with them and, uh, they're like, they're like, yeah, what do you need to make that happen? Like, let's, let's, let's slow it down and get back to yeah, the pace where everybody can where it's sustainable that's what it comes down to is can we work at a sustainable pace because we weren't and we knew it i mean everybody knew it but i think it's uh, worth like you know if if you if you if you are tracking like story points and sprint velocity and those sorts of things i think it's worth like being like yeah okay so we were pushing out however many points and now we're going to just like deliberately take half of that for yeah. you know a sprint or two just to just to slow things down and give us a little bit more breathing room um and yeah and, and using that as a way to to because like we had to do that to our, our team like you know we lost an engineer because he left and then we lost uh, an engineering manager because he was laid off uh and then like that affected velocity less uh the latter but like the you know we had to sort of like well this is what we were doing before this is our best and this is kind of what we were pushing for uh and not not ever consistently hitting and just a thing that we did a couple times that was really good and really you know completed a whole bunch of points and now this is what we are consistently hitting and now we need to scale it back by an amount because we're we're down an engineer so what does that look yeah. like um and even if like that means that there's like like if there's room in the sprint for other things like if there's room because you know we the like there's there's you know what it means is like like last sprint we completed everything that we committed to hey that was amazing we i don't think we've ever done that before like everything is actually closed and there's nothing carrying over like it's a um and that just gives you more space to to actually like you know accomplish it and like feel like you're you're closing stuff out as opposed to just like well and it gives you that exhilarating time. completion feeling of like Oh, this isn't just me running on a treadmill. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got somewhere. <laughs> and, yeah. and the reality is, you can't like just look at that engineer and say, "What do we take away to to accommodate for this?" Because there's there's other impacts. Like it's not like a one to one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, right. There's that's there's the like thing. an assumed like point differential, but there's also like you know he's really good at x and now we don't have that that subject matter expertise so yeah. like we need to to adjust accordingly that way too there's also the whole thing around like um like, like story points is a metric like you could use any other arbitrary metric um in our case it's like um well kind of it's lines of code per pull request because one of the one of the 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 patterns we see is that when things are really crazy, the pull requests get like larger mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it, it like pretty consistently people open the same amount of pull requests per week. Like does it, I mean, it's pretty like sometimes they're huge, sometimes they're small, but it seems like somehow it's a, it's a pretty similar number, even in weeks where there's not a lot to do, which, Oh, I found this tiny bug and they open a pull request for it. Um, so lines of code per pull request is a metric that like is complete BS, but it's one that I'm going to be looking at because it's something it's an, I, it's an indicator of tinier more surgical work i mean i i think i shared in our slack when i was looking at people's um like just get activity comparatively across the team and like the number of commits per like i don't know week or quarter or whatever like like of just a mm. value or um just like just looking at the difference in the numbers um and and like, yeah, that's also a bullshit metric, but it could be like, you know, know my GitHub. It, it could be a sign of of things sometimes, like uh, at least things to be aware of, like this person maybe moves slowly or more slowly, like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's a reason for that, but like, um, it's, it's good to sort of be aware because it may not affect team velocity, but maybe it does. And, you know. You know what I realized weird. is I transferred a repo to someone like ownership mm -hmm. and everything, all my 
commits from it disappeared which makes sense but like then when I look at my green squares I'm like oh they look mm, totally different now. yeah because because, because you, why would it be tied anymore. to something that yeah I'm no anyway unless you're still part of you know unless you transferred it to like an organization and you're still in the organization or something yeah that, that is not what happens. yeah I am um, <laughs> I was looking at my get because I was curious um you commit like, a lot what's that you commit a lot yeah well normally it's like a lighter green but today or like this week it was like 30 contributions on monday 30, 28 tuesday 20 i don't know wednesday. if this week will be the example week hopefully. <laughs> yeah no i think this is going to be a, a, an outlier like i only see one other week in here that i think is what was i doing in february i wonder I had a crazy week in February where I did like 42, 34, 45. That was a busy three days. I keep meaning to make one of those fun read me. On oh, my for, your, for your GitHub Yeah, and then account? I keep forgetting yeah. when I have nothing to do. I'm like, oh, I should do that. And then I'm like, do, do, do. Or I'll just wander in the garden, apparently. <laughs> Oh, I know what that week was. Oh, how funny is that? I I can look at that look at the look at that week, and I can I can figure out that that's when I was doing um pulling uh history content into the NASA repo. Oh. yeah, that's neat. Um, no, I don't think there'll be a week like this one for a while. Like I even like it's crazy like how physically like you even feel like working like yeah. that because I mean I wasn't I wasn't doing anything. I was at my desk like thinking, but like my back and shoulders and. I'll get over it. I'll get, you know, I'll take it easy in this weekend and take some walks and stuff. But uh, I'm like, what in the world? Yeah, it's kind of hard to reset yourself routine wise, aside from like what's expected from you at work, but just being mm -hmm. like, oh, in the mornings, like I do this. This is mm -hmm. yeah how I set myself up for success. Like I have the last two mornings though. So like in the pre like beta mayhem, like getting the beta up to mayhem I, every morning at eight o'clock i i read for an hour mm -hmm. um so i did that the last two days and like i found myself getting distracted and instead of being like no focus and read i was like yeah if i spend an hour and i read like five pages and space out for the rest of it like that's totally cool like that's a valid use of that time mm -hmm. so Ooh, I, uh, can we do allison's reading corner yeah yes, let's do it please <laughs> I just, okay, so... I just finished a book the other day. I finished uh, Happy Place by, I don't know, it's in my Goodreads. Happy <laughs> Place. Oh, I've read that. Um, I know the cover. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't, it's like Emily Adams or something. Emily something, something sounds Henry. Like, yeah, Emily Henry. <laughs> I reread, we read, um, uh, Aaron read a couple things by her and I read, um, Oh, what's the one where she's at uh like by the lake up at her parents place or whatever um that's in my history too no not my to read pile damn it carry on with your thing okay so i've read one of these and then i'm in the middle of the other one the one that i've read is the wild edge of sorrow mm. by francis weller it's called rituals of renewal and the sacred work work of grief um it's really like prose and lyrics and it's kind of like poetry um and it's super interesting uh the author's a psychotherapist um yeah it basically it's all about like kind of transforming grief into a force that allows you to live more fully but um it's like very poetic and just super interesting I really loved it so much that I bought a copy which is like very rare for me <laughs> i try not to own too many books mm. basically the other beach, one beach read is the book that i was i was trying beach to read think. yes yeah. and she's a really great author yeah. um and i didn't like the more recent one as much as her other stuff for whatever that's worth <laughs> the happy place one happy place. like it was fine yeah. but i yeah, i was I, holding her up to a higher caliber than I, what I i agree and aaron agrees also i felt i found myself halfway into the book still being annoyed by the main characters yeah um like get over yourself you know <laughs> you have yeah you have to have more um more like i don't know what the word is 
they just have to be more endearing than they are yeah <laughs> yeah and I've, I've read so i read i've read two books by grady hendrix recently oh um uh, i read horror store which is basically about a haunted ikea uh which is amazing uh and i read my best friend's exorcism which okay. was very so i read the exorcist when i was in high school uh and as i got to a certain point in this book and i was like oh shit this is that again because the exorcist i will tell you is the one book that fucking terrified me and i read a lot of horror and the exorcist was was intense um and i had that that same feeling at a certain point in that book and i was like oh shit um and uh and then it was it was fine i mean it it, it gets through that but i i thought it was it was not the easiest read at least for like again like the first half i think grady hendrix's books have a, a very slow start and they and their books also have this um like you don't necessarily like the main characters like they deal with very flawed very problematic main characters um so you get to this point where like you're still reading and you're reading in spite of the main characters not being particularly likable or you're like finding stuff to like about them um right. uh but it ended a lot better than i expected it to like i expected it to end in a typical horror story like everybody dies and the world is shit and it actually ended in a very much like hey relationships aren't perfect but uh they can work and they can be long lasting and they can be worth the work and the effort you put into them and that was a really different vibe than, yeah. I, than what i expected to get out of that that's so, it's very drastically different yeah yeah it was so it made it worth it so what else are you, what else is in, oh uh, my other book which i'm only part part way through is Come as you are, the surprising new science yep. that will transform your sex life. I saw that on your on your uh I saw that on your um story graph uh pop up. Uh and I was like, yep, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's really I I was she also wrote a book with her uh her sister about yeah, burnout. burnout that yep. I really love. We read mm -hmm. them, we read them in reverse order. So we read Come As You Are first. Yeah. Uh and then and then and then I wanted to read Burnout because I wanted to read about the burnout that I was having. Yeah. Um and uh yeah, I, I really like her her just approach to things because it's very research based but also like not super heavy technical. Yeah, and that's it's just really accessible but still fact based and mm -hmm. I was just like, "Oh, I'm really into this. This is great." Like, I don't know. So, those are my uh two reads. Yeah. Lately. I can I can highly recommend uh, come as you are even as a masculine identifying human mm -hmm. um it's it's like honestly it's information that everybody should have yeah well even like i was just like this feels like the health class i should have taken at some yeah. point <laughs> yeah yeah for sure and and burnout was the same sort of way like a lot of her examples and a lot of the scenarios that she describe or were specifically from a woman's perspective because that's obviously who she is and who she's writing the book for and because women have a lot of like um just assumed emotional labor that they just mm -hmm. take on because of their role with society and expectations at large um but the research and fact-based stuff and all the stuff that goes into it like it it manifests the same way and it like the stuff you deal with is is the same um so even even if i had even without that particular particular lived context it still was um worth it for uh from you know not a woman reading this book i also liked it because it just acknowledged a lot of those structural things that were yes. like sometimes burnout is because of the system like it's not yeah. don't mm -hmm. don't think this is you personally this is yeah. the system within your work like that you're working within so yeah and also like to be aware of those systems from the outside like you like and like for myself like not to play into those things right like yeah. to understand that there are those contexts and it's so helpful to read something <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. 
Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. 